Bronte Ballin. I am a fourth year medical student at Wake Forest School of Medicine. And today for the Radiology Scholar Certificate Program, I will be giving a brief overview of abdominal x-rays or KUBs. The learning objectives for this lecture is to understand a common approach to reading KUBs and then also identifying common pathologies on them. So the first thing I'd like to talk about today is a common approach to reading KUBs. So KUB stands for kidneys, ureter, bladder, and it is interchangeable with the term abdominal x-ray. So both of them are the same study, which is an x-ray of the abdomen. So the first thing that you can look for on a KUB is lines or tubes. For more information on how to identify whether a line or a tube is properly positioned based off of an x-ray, please watch our video on the topic. The second thing you can look for is solid organs, the third GI tract, fourth urinary tract, fifth peritoneum, six lungs, seven bones. And we'll go through this in the next few slides. So like I previously mentioned, the first thing that we would normally look at is lines or tubes, but we're gonna save that for the other video on the topic. And we're gonna jump to the second thing, which is we are going to assess the solid organs. So what we're looking for here is any organ enlargement or any abnormal location of an organ. So solid organs can be a little bit difficult to see on x-ray and you mostly have to look at the outlines, which can usually be identified with a lot of practice. So on the left image, you can see that there is a liver, if you can kind of see that line, uh, that is a little bit enlarged, so hepatomegaly. The red arrow is pointing to the inferior tip of the liver, which almost reaches the pelvic brim. On the right side of the screen, you can see another KUB that shows an enlarged spleen, so splenomegaly. I think this one is a little bit easier to identify. You can see that the red arrows are pointing to the inferior aspect of the large spleen. There is a resultant displacement of the bowel loops as well. The liver is normal sized in this image and the yellow arrow indicates the inferior tip of the liver, if you can see that. The next thing that we are going to assess is the GI tract. So we wanna make sure we identify the gastric bubble in the left upper quadrant. And then we're gonna globally assess the small bowel and the large bowel. So the small bowel will be located in the central abdomen and the colon will be located alongside the periphery of the abdomen. And in both of these structures, we're going to be looking for abnormal dilation or abnormal separation of the loops due to bowel wall thickening. So on the left side of the screen, we have an x-ray from an upper GI series with small bowel follow through. You can see that it really highlights that small bowel in the central abdomen. And on the right side of the screen, we have an x-ray from a barium, barium enema, which highlights the colon. It's good to keep in mind where these structures are, especially in relation to each other. This will help as you continue on reading KUBs. So here's an example of some pathologies that you can see on KUBs. So on the left, we have an upright, and on the right, we have a supine abdominal radiograph. There are multiple dilated loops of bowel in the central abdomen, and the linear folds extend from one side of the lumen to the other, so it gives it this kind of slinky appearance, if you can see that. So this is the classic appearance for small bowels, and these little wall folds are called valvulae coniventes. So this is a classic case of distal small bowel obstruction on the upright view. So the image on the left, you can see that there are these multiple air fluid levels, which are uh, indicated by the red arrows. And that is the classic finding for small bowel obstruction. Now, this is a case of large bowel obstruction. Notice how the dilated bowel loops are on the periphery of the abdomen as opposed to the center of the abdomen. And also notice how the folds appear thicker and then seem to fade away before reaching the opposite wall as indicated by the red arrow. These are both ways that you can tell that this obstruction is in the colon as opposed to in the small intestine. So this is another case of some pathology that you can see within the GI tract on a KUB. This case shows marked distension of the transverse colon. It also has that nodular appearing wall thickening. Um, and this was a patient with toxic megacolon secondary to C. difficile colitis. 
The fourth thing you want to make sure you look at is the urinary tract. So the image on the left is called an intravenous pilogram, and it is essentially an x-ray that is performed after waiting for intravenous injected contrast material to be excreted by the kidneys. So this study will nicely outline the renal collecting system and the ureters. So notice how the ureters normally travel lateral to the vertebral bodies and medial to the tips of the transverse processes. They then deviate medially at the pelvic inlet and then bow laterally before joining the bladder. Since you can't actually normally see the ureters on x-ray, it is important to have a mental image of where they normally lay. The image on the right shows bilateral ureteral calculi. You can see those indicated by the red arrows. Notice how they are exactly where you would expect the ureters to course. These can be very subtle, so it's important that you're actively looking for them in order to identify them properly. So the fifth thing we wanna be able to assess is the peritoneum. So you wanna make sure you're looking for any abnormal densities in the peritoneum, which could indicate ascites, or any abnormal lucencies, which could in indicate pneumoperitoneum. So on the left hand of the screen, you can see that this is an upright X-ray. And on this image, you can see the classic appearance of pneumoperitoneum with that free air underneath the right hemidiaphragm. An upright x-ray has a much higher sensitivity for free air than the supine imaging. Sometimes patients can't tolerate upright imaging, so a decubitus or cross-table imaging can be used instead of upright. Free air is best seen against a smooth surface like the liver, so if you do a decubitus view, it is better to have the patient on the right side up. The right image is a cross-table lateral view of the abdomen in a patient who was stabbed with a knife. The red arrow indicates pneumoperitoneum just deep to the anterior abdominal wall. And for the sixth and seventh thing that we look for on KUB, which is lung bases and bones, we will have different videos on both lung pathologies and bone pathologies if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that. This is the end of our video today, so thank you very much for watching and take care.